What's happening, everyone? Before this next Lego podcast show starts, this is a reminder to you not to be a minge bag. Go over to Patreon, sign up for a pound a week, and take advantage of all the Patreon perks. It is the Patreon that pays. We have a betting show on a Saturday, which the postman here is picking winners every single week. Yeah, the betting show comes out Saturday mornings, covers UFC and boxing, footy when we're in, we're in the footy season. But yeah, we're winning on a weekly basis. I can't remember the last week we didn't find some sort of winner. So yeah, as Andy says, don't be a minge bag, come and get involved. And as I say, it's one of the best communities that you could be a part of, isn't it? It's a belter. As well as the betting show on a Wednesday, me and George have a chat. That's where you might have seen on our Insta reels about Crocs, about harpooning people at the end of the night, all that kind of chat that goes on. And even better, every single Wednesday, we do a raffle draw and our sponsors, Montrex, give a hundred pound gift voucher away just for being on Patreon. No better time to join. There's 30 plus episodes already that you can go back and watch. Again, no better time. Get involved. Don't be a minge bag. Pound a week and we'll see you there. All right, welcome back to the Leggy Podcast. It's me, Jordan Neald. It's me, Andy Grant. And this week's guest is Shemrock. Jeez, what's happening, lads? What's happening, lads? Right. All right. Yeah, sound. First off, massive shout out to Montrex, our sponsors. Once again, you get 15% off if you type in Leggy at checkout. And also, if you support us on Patreon for just a pound a week, Every single week we do a raffle and you get a hundred pounds Montrex gift voucher just for being a patron, Leggett Legends and supporting the po- podcast. So get involved in that. Uh, if you want to get onto Veer clothing, you get Leggett 20, gives you 20% off and also Health Kit Kitchen. Yeah. I've been supplying our scrans for the Sportscast show on a Friday, so get on them too. All the links are in the bio. And just before we start as well, you'll notice this is the first time in a while we've done a guest because we've been focusing on the Patreon. Where I can just talk shit to me mate, which I've quite enjoyed. Uh, but we are going to get mate. the guests going again. And to be honest, Joel, I can't think of a better, more interesting guest yeah, than lads. the one we've got in now. So, Shem, thanks for your time, lad. Yeah, man, Sam, happy to be here. Yeah, no, all right. It was a, it's a story I've like sort of looked at from afar. So I'm buzzing to like ask you the actual questions that. Yeah. Because sometimes you look at someone and you sort of you build a picture, don't you? Like like, mm. like you know somebody. Yeah. But like just basically off what people write or you know what the podcast you've been on or whatever. So. I think it'll go away. Uh, mm. This will be a good one. To be South Ender, Tokyo, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? I'm from Bootle, so do the end. So, what was like growing up for you? Is that how old are you now? I'm 28. 28. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit older than me. I'm 34. <laughs> yeah, a little bit younger. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, talk about growing up then, lad. Um, yeah, early on, Ma and Da living together. Um, spent most of my time fucking round family. And then at some point, my man and dad split up. So when my man and dad split up, we all went with my ma. Mm-hmm. So we went from like, even though we were from LA, my dad done well and that. So we were living in nice houses. We had nice cars. I went to private school and that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What private school? Like I was going to some school called, um, what was it called now? Um, no private schools in Bootle, lad. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was far, like, mm. it, it was, where was it? It was like in Neston or somewhere, yeah, man. Yeah. So my dad's driving me there every day. And when you're a kid, you don't you don't know no difference. No. So I'm mm. just coming back to LA and then going out with my mates and that. And they're all like, what school do you go to? Why, why do you wear? Because I used to wear like a little flat cap and a tie and that and a blazer. And the other kids are like, why do you dress like a nonce? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> just imagine, I don't know, we're going to skip, skip that, but just imagine if you make it, lad, you might be the only UFC like champ to go to private school. Oh, That's imagine. No, imagine. It's a selling point, that. <laughs> 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 private school, boys. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. something that I'd, I'd not even heard. I hadn't seen you say that before. Yeah, but yeah. What was that like then? Obviously, as a kid, you, as you say, you're quite naive to the fact that, you know, you're just going to school, aren't you? Your dad's just dropping you at school. But it must have been like a sort of a clash of two worlds really so you know I mean? my dad is a big hench black guy with loads of tattoos all over his body and he's dropping me off in fucking Aldi TT pulling up bl- blazing rap music <laughs> and then the other kids are like their dads would be like 60 years of age do you know what mm. I mean our men and that businessmen and the others used to look at us and just be like what the fuck what's <laughs> happened to this girl <laughs> and then I didn't know no different time. Just I was just a little twat as a kid, so mm. I like teachers would be like, "Do you work?" I'd be running around the class, jumping off the curtains and that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like I didn't really, I didn't really fit in in there. But when it comes to like doing my work, I've always been quite academic. I was quite smart. I just always get in trouble like at lunchtime and that, mm. playtime and. Yeah. Did you get on with the kids in the school life? Um, I'm imagining. 
Not, Do you know not what? stereotypical, cl- but I'm imagining yeah. different type of kids that are from yeah. different it's a LA. culture clash, isn't it? It, it? it was mostly loads of white kids, to be honest, but there was like a few kids who like, um, the parents were like, there was a Brazilian kid in my class, there was, so when I was young, I went to school in Portugal as well, I lived in Portugal for a bit, my little brother was born in Portugal, so I could speak Portuguese, and because he was Brazilian, I'd like, because mm. it, it's 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 a bit different yeah. Portugal Portuguese and Braz- but we'd like speak to each other and change words and that. Um, but I weren't there for that long because then my mum and dad ended up splitting up and then my mum's a single parent now we're living on a council estate and fucking my ma's on the dole raising three kids on her own. We ain't going to private school mm. no more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So then I went to public school. My ma ended up taking us over the water. I lived over the water for a bit. And this old wolf for a bit, lad. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, I was just getting into shit every day and that. So my ma took us to London, and then mm. I, did, I did most of my school, like most of my secondary school, was just in London. So yeah, I was living in um, Tottenham and Camden, but mostly Tottenham. London was rough. Like mm. we stayed in loads of hostels. Like, yeah, went to some grimy schools. Like the school I went to when I first attended the school, the school had like a full revamp. Because uh, one of the one of the students stabbed the teacher, so they, they changed all the school name, changed the uniform, got rid of all the teachers, but kept all the same students. Yeah, so saying. nothing changed. You know what I mean? It was one of them schools. When you come to the gate, there's police there and the metal detector. Oh, so it was rough. Like kids used to run round the back of the school and put the knives under the under the fence, go through the metal detector, and then go and get the blades and that. Jeez, mate, you've had a lot, like <laughs> just in like five minutes, you've had a lot of life experience for like a young. Yeah, lad, do you know what I mean? Like, I know obviously your family sort of that had to happen because of your family situation. But did you realise that at the time, like that, what you were doing? Because normal's probably not the right way, but it's not standard, is it? To be, yeah. you know, moving here and then it's all right. You know, I'm from a council state myself. You know, moving from one road to the next, so to speak. But you're going from Liverpool over the water, then to the opposite end of the country. Did you realise at the time that it was, or did you just go go with the flow, sort of thing? Growing up, we always moved out a lot. Even when I was with my dad and that, like he obviously he was doing what he was doing, so he was a bit palo. So we'd always be moving houses. We moved abroad loads. I've been lived. I've lived in a dam with him. I've lived in Portugal with him. So we were always getting about. There was even like a, a bit where he was on the run. That's why we were, we were in Amsterdam. Um, so when you're a kid, you don't know. No. You just think, oh yeah, I'm with my family. We're moving to a new house. We're moving to a new house. We're staying in a hotel. We're here with it. So it's a big adventure, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Like that naivety that kids have, I think we said it on the podcast before, I'm like, it kills me that you lose that. Do you know what I mean? Because as a kid, like, as you say, you say, I know, so, you know things are involved, maybe crime or whatever, but it is just an adventure, isn't it? As a kid, mm. you're just like, yeah. But, but at the same time, if you never lost that naivety, people will take advantage of you. Yeah, absolutely. Especially true. in this world. Yeah. yeah that, so you kind of need to lose it at some stage. Yeah. I think that's, well, that, that essentially is growing up in a sentence, isn't it? Once you yeah. start to understand that. Yeah. Like you know, things things aren't all rosy. Things mm-hmm. aren't you yeah. know, it's not. Things summer. aren't always what they seem. Yeah, it's not, and it's not summer every day. Do you know what I mean? It's just. Mm-hmm. The, so when what like part did you sort of, when you were growing up, sort of adolescent? You was that all in all in London? Um, I'd say I moved to London. I don't. I done year seven, on the Wirral, and then moved to London halfway through, or like near the end of year seven, and then I did most of me most of me like secondary school years mm. in London yeah yeah was you ever was the idea to always come back so even though I was living in London like I never liked the school mm. I, f- I was the only scouser then it's like I'm mixed race so it was like the school was like segregated like the Albanians over there then the Turkish and Kurdish were kind of over there the Somalians then the blacks then the Caribbean lads were over there then the white boys were over there so my first day in the school I've been raised as black. My mum's always told me you're black. We we are but a black family. So I've come on the Astro turf to the lads like, what's happening, boys? Yes, and they're like, what are you doing on here, white boy? The white so the white boys are over there. Do you know what I mean? One of them with the blade on me, my first day on school, lad. And I thought like, what? This girl's mad. But I was a cheeky kid, so I was like, what? Fuck you, you little rat! And they're giving it back to them. They chased me off the Astro. And then you go with the white hell. boys, and the white boys are like. What are you on about me? Nah. So it was a bit mad. I ended up chilling with these like these Caribbean kids who, who were like they were kind of fresh, but they were like um, from a good family, so they didn't want to hang around with the rough kids. So I was just with them, and I thought like a lot of the time they were speaking Patois, 
and I can't speak Patois, I can only speak, Eng- speak English. What's that, it's like j- the Jamaican language, but these okay. were Jamaicans, even though I'm from Barbados, it's similar. So I could understand it, but I couldn't speak it. Mm. So I'd be speaking in English and they'd be speaking in Patois, and I'd be like, come on, boy, speak English. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, what well, man, sh- <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Giving it to me and that. But, um, just school just went for me, lad. I just thought I was going to this shit school. I didn't like it. I was already up to no good anyway. And I just thought, fuck this. So I just stopped going. And um, I was just selling bits of weed and that. I used to I, <laughs> I used to get like nines of weed, half bars of weed in London. I'd go and get bunk the virgin train, lock myself in the toilet. For two hours. <laughs> Salatate tape, sala the button so no one could come in, even when they had the key. Then I'd fucking get off Lime Street and just sprint past the guards, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'd stay in Liverpool until my weed was gone. And then I'd get the train back and go back to London. And my ma, like, obviously, my ma's thinking, where the fuck's her son? I'm only 12, 13, 14. And uh, my mum would be like, where are you? And I'd be like, I'm just in my mates. And then a week into it, she'd be ringing me like, my mates just seen you, you're on Lodgy, you're chatting shit. And I'd be like, we ain't me, we ain't me. <laughs> Deny till you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that's such like, it, it, as you said before, something only a scouser could, someone with like scouse blood could do. Yeah, that. Just, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, like the cellar type thing, do you know what I mean? Everyone else would go like, just trying to sit by the window or something and pretend you're a kid or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm asleep, mate. So. In, in, in the end, all the ticket men used to be like, what's happening, Sherm? You're all right, lad. And I'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, don't be getting on the... Tr- I'm not. I'm, I'm just seeing me mates off. Me mates going up. And then I'd wait till the doors close, get on the last round and lock myself in the toilet again. I love everyone's bringing back home suitcases and bags and shit. It's got a load of weed and sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> going on. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd done that for a good two, three years or something. And then my mum just said like, it's not on we'll just end up going back to Liverpool it'd be better mm. so then me mom moved back to Liverpool um, we moved we moved to Rock Ferry that was over the water as well um, we were living in Rock Ferry and then um, I, when I come back it was like like I, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to make me mum sad anymore type of thing mm. like I thought I was a bit older now I'm maybe 15 16 and me mum's like what are you doing, lad? You, you, you're getting the door kicked off by police. You're up to no good, blah, blah, blah. She was like, what are you going to do when you're older than that? Do you want to be like... And you know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought, no, I'm going to put my head down. So I went back to school. <clears throat> and I was going to school in um, Pensby. Pensby Boys School. It was an all boys school. And because uh, I'd been off, off school for so long, they put me back here. <laughs> so I was going to school. And lad, it was a bit mad, I felt like. I don't know how to explain it. I felt like an adult just mm. going to school with kids. You had life experience. Yeah, because I'd had real life experience and then I'm going to school and all these kids are like, let's play tag. <laughs> and I'm like, mate, you're fucking 15. What are you on about? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was coming to school with and joints on the yard and that and the kids are like, you're mad. What are you doing? <laughs> and I'd just be like, what? Do you want half? <laughs> <laughs> but I, w- I was genuinely keeping my head down though, like even though I was still on the weed and that, mm. I weren't like, I, I weren't grafting or not, and I was just going to school, doing the work, then come come, pl- come like lunchtime and that, just keeping myself to myself, maybe playing footy or having a few joints. I used to go to the chess club and that and try and like play chess with the other kids, I swear. <laughs> And um, I was doing my best to like keep me head down. I wanted to make my mum happy and that because my mum was fucking on my case. She didn't want mm-hmm. me to be like my dad or be like the other. Are you still yeah. seeing like your dad and like the lads from the pool and that eye You're not um, really seeing them. Like I speak to my dad. I'm close to my dad. Like, but he, at, there was a point where it was just me mum and my three brothers. Mm. Uh, my two brothers. Um, me, me. When we were living in London, my older brother didn't like it. It was, it was rough on him. Like he was older than me. Do you know what I mean? Um, like the area where we were living in Seven Sisters people were getting stabbed every day it was like you weren't going out your door past seven mm. we used to come out every single day and they'd be like just a group of smackheads outside our house because we had the corner house with the biggest garden so they'd just, they'd just be chilling in your garden injecting up on that so me and him would have to be going out every day and just do smackheads in and that <laughs> and we'd be like what and then when you're in Liverpool you sold the dream that London's yeah. the best place to be and we were just like Lad, we've been scammed here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, lad? You say it like, and uh, you said before that you were quite academically clever, and I can tell already because of the way you like present mm. stories and stuff. Yeah. And you do say it in a comedic way, but that's like such a 
like a harsh way of seeing reality. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. they say you go back to school and you feel like a man, but like mentally you probably are. Do you know yeah. what I mean? At that point, because I know, like as you say, you do say in the comedic way, and it is funny now. But doing stuff like that's not something somebody that young should be seeing yeah. or doing, isn't it? It's do you know funny now because in the past, but it's like sad, isn't it? To yeah. think yeah. like you know, a few young lads are out there, you know, not from where um, out the kind of area they grew up in, down in London, having yeah. to do that in their own front garden. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it was mad. Like so, then at some point, my dad came back to Liverpool because my dad was abroad. My dad's um, since the divorced, he, he went abroad. That's why we never really seen him. Uh, he come back for his mum's funeral, and then he took all us to the funeral. And then after the funeral, he gave us a choice. He was like, "You can stay with your mum, or you can come abroad and live with me." And my mum's the type of mum that had let us make our own choice. She wouldn't be like, "No, you're not." Mm. So she was like, "Just want to go with him, or just want to stay." And Honestly, I was going to pick to go with my dad because my dad's living in the big houses, the fucking abroad, on holiday life, nice cars, and I'm living in a fucking shit hole in London, lad, going from hostel to hostel in schools that I don't even want to go to. And my dad's like, look, don't worry, you'll have a good little job and put you on whatever. Don't. So I'm like, yeah. But my brother was like, I'm going. So I thought, if my brother goes and I go, then I'm going to leave my young little brother to grow up in London on his own with mm. my ma and my ma will be heartbroken that both of her sons have left her so I was just like nah go on then you go I'll stay so I stayed with my mum and he went with my dad and then obviously we've come back to Liverpool well I'm living on the Willow at that point um, <clears throat> I was going to school keeping my head down and then it was like there was me, so my mum I don't know if you've watched my Instagram story before my mum's like a um, she grows all her own plants and that all the food she makes she grows the, the fruit and veg herself mm. so my mum's always been into like eating healthy a good good mm. quality of life so me when i was growing up like i wanted to go and learn horticulture so i could be like grow my own food have me fat even now that's still one of my dreams when i retire from and mma you've got an insta thing haven't you yeah, yeah, like your yeah, yeah, yeah 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 when i retire from mma maybe in the future i get a bit of dough and i do want to have my own land and live off the land mm. fucking your house with solar panel like that's one of my dreams to have my own farm and that i don't think uh, a lot of the food we're being fed yeah. is, no. is is real food but that's another story so um i went i went started to go to this school lad. um it was in nantwich it was like a college for horticulture so um i popped up there lad first day it's like two and a half hours travel they provide buses for you to get there and that so I'm going to this school in Nantwich, lad, and it was mad. It was like, it was like a major culture shock. Like I'm showing up in trackies and everyone else is showing up in suits or like farmers in flat caps and fucking. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. I'm I'm showing up thinking I'm going to be one of the lads, and I just weren't. It was just like a different vibe. I'm like, what's happening, boys? You're all right, and they're like, he's a bit weird, him. <laughs> so I didn't really know anyone, lad. And there was this old man, and he was on the course. He was about sixty. So I'm like, what's happening, lad? Why are you doing this? And he's like, oh, I'm on the dole, lad. The dole are making me do it. So I'm like, yeah, you're with me, lad. Come here. So he was like my only mate, lad. I'm chilling with this 60-year-old man, trying to speak to people my age, and they're just like, get, get back to the fucking hood. <laughs> but lad, I was driving tractors, fucking farming, growing plants and that, lad. It was mad. It was like... Bro, the only way I can describe it was like Hogwarts. It was a, it was a big castle, but there was no magic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know the footy team oh, crew, man. Alexandra. Yeah. They train there, and most of the people on the course were like, uh, they wanted to do like maintaining footy pitches or golf courses. Mm. Then there was like another side for equestrian. Then there was like ones who wanted to fucking learn how to wank spam, uh, wank balls and collect the spam. <laughs> lad, it was a mad gaff, bro. It was a mad gaff. So, I'm at look. I was proper keeping me head down. This is one story that's gonna go from fucking being in a college that's wanking fucking horses and bulls off to fucking UFC, lad. It's gonna be good. They, they had this bull like he bought from America for a million quid. Mm -hmm. It's big dog. It, yeah, big it was dog. mad and lad. When well, you know when you the, see just it, just for the jizz of the lad, bull. Yeah. See, there's a Netflix a thing about it, isn't he? Lad, it's big money. Is lad, it, it, big it money. just looked like this big huge thing on steroids, big yeah. neck on it. Lad, it was mad. It was mad. But anyway, so I'm coming to this school and uh, I'm fucking travelling every day. I was uh, we weren't really living with my ma at this point, I was staying in some bird's house. Um, still obviously close to my ma, checking by every day. My ma was still living in Rock Ferry. And um, lad, I weren't doing any graft, I'd fucked everything off. I was proper two feet in and I was like, 
going to be a farmer. I'm going to learn how to grow fucking crops and that. Um, and then lad, one day they've been like um, principals come to the come to the class. I'm sitting in class, and they've been like, hey, Shaquem, can you come to the office a sec? So I'm like, yeah, it's sound. I've gone to walk out the, the door, and as I've gone to walk out the door, lad, all these busies just jumped on me. So I'm like, what? He's making a show of me. So I've jumped up and just started going mad. Obviously, they've twisted me up. They've uh, handcuffed me, took me. I was in custody. It was a Friday in school. So they kept me over the weekend and released me on the Monday. So I got out the police station on the Monday, all fucking scruffy. And I've gone, shit, I need to go back to college. Because I've come straight out the police station, I didn't take the normal bus that I would have took. I took a different bus. Showed up to the college, come back, sat down. I'm in class. And the teacher's looking at me like, and I'm like, what's up, sir? You're all right? And he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I go to school here, mate. What are you doing here? And he's like, I think you need to go to the office, you know? So I thought, wow, this is mad. Gone down to the office. <clears throat> Sit in front of the principal. I'm like, what's up? He's like, yeah, the, the police have told us, mate. You, you can't come here no more. And I'm like, the police have told you what? The police have told them that I was selling crack to their students. And then I'm a drug dealer, and yeah. And at that point in my life, I'd only ever sold weed. I would, like, obviously, some of my mates done whatever they were doing, but that weren't my thing. I always thought, like, I believe in karma, and I thought, if I do that, it's it's gonna give me family a bad name. If my mum finds out, she's not gonna be happy, and I'll also feel guilty. So I've only ever really sold weed at that point. So I'm like, what? I got I got me me mum's house raided. They were looking for um, stolen motorbikes. I don't even ride motorbikes, but whatever they needed to get the warrant, you know what I mean? Um, my mum said, like, they were fucking ripping the mattresses open and that, ripping the couches open. Like, there's no motorbikes in there, lad, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they knew what they were looking for, but there was nothing in there. Because they couldn't find nothing, they took one of my pedal bikes. I had a receipt for it, fully legit, and still never got the pedal bike back to this day. And then they used that to say handling stolen goods to get a, a arrest warrant to come to the school and get me. They could have arrested me on the street, but I think they wanted to fuck with me, so they were like, yeah, we'll get him while he's in college. They nicked me, whatever, I come back to college. And um, when I've applied to the college, I had a criminal record for possession of cannabis, a 20 bag. That's the only thing I ever had on my record. And um, they were like, you've got a criminal record as well. So that was the little loophole to kick me out of college. So I got kicked out of college, lad, because of them fucking scumbags, the police. What was the reason for it? What were they trying to... In the, in the first place, you still not know now. Do, ha, do we looking for motorbike parts and motorbikes? Which... Is that how close you were then to like, you know? I know you. We'll, we'll move on to what to what happened soon. But is that how close you were to like being completely like away from out, like, yeah. uh, being yeah. away from all that stuff? You were that like, was the you... first time in my life from I'd say 11, 10 years of age that I've gone. I'm out now, I'm, and I, I, it's not like I can say I'm out. I've made it. I had big money. I never. I was on my ass, lad. But, you but I was putting the work in. I was like. Literally was getting money off the government to fucking dole, and I'm one of them. I never signed on the dole in my life, but at that point I was. I was getting money off the government because I was going to college, so I never had to sign on. But they, yeah. were, they were giving me money just to go to college, so I was just going to college, coming home, going to college, come, and that's all I was doing, lad. Sad that you know, like because I know obviously you know we'll get onto the story and stuff, but I just it just frustrates me because mm. like if you've actually made an effort to to cut yourself away from. Because let's be honest, like when sort of growing up, it, crime could have been sh- put on you as an inevitability, couldn't it? In mm. terms of like where you where you are, you know, people that you're seeing around you, you, you know. But if someone actually makes a conscious effort to go, I don't want to do that. I want to go and do this. Something that's really niche as well. Like I know we've made a joke about it. Yeah. But then one thing like that, and then you're back at square one. Yeah. At that point, are you just thinking, right? Well, do well, you- I think the circle that I kept, because all my mates were all grafting, but that's them. But my family, like loads of my family members were all grafters. So I think the police were just tarring me with the same brush and were like, yeah, fuck you, we're going to get you. And I can't lie, when the police stopped me, I went stopping, I was running. Innocent, nothing on me, but that was my mentality, lad. Mm. Fuck the police, like, nah, these aren't my mates. Whenever they stop me, they're taking a phone off me or they're taking me to the police station for two days or they're strip searching me. So I was just like, and I didn't really know my rights like I do now. Now I'm a bit more clued up. Then it was like, the, 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 the stopping me there on the side of the street and they're pulling me kicks down and getting me cock out on the roadside and they're going, yeah, he hasn't got no weed on him, send him on his way. 
where now I know you can't do that I'm getting my phone out and I'm filming them do you know what I mean where when you're a kid mm. you don't know all that mm. you just think oh they're just doing their job well not to me you know so I just used to run so I get it why they didn't like me and that do you know what I mean but I was genuinely trying my best to be a mm. member of this fucking society that's so to say but when that happened to me I can look back now and say that was the turning point so yeah, just yeah, just switch switch that, that was the point when I just went you know what you want me to be the bad guy watch and then from then I was just doing everything I was just like fuck you and I just went away. It, it is sad that like yeah. I could understand why you'd have resentment and bitterness because it's like George just said then you're having a go and then if they're putting that many obstacles in your way I can half understand why you've just went fuck you then it's not it's not just you though do you know it, it's like a, it's a it's a whole society problem because mm. for the people that want to get out and it's like you're saying you know if, if the, the police or whoever just go right everyone's bad do you know what I mean? It's such a dangerous way to look at things because you then, you know, as you said then, how many people like you have gone, right, well, if you want me to be a criminal, then I'm going to be a criminal. Or if and there's it, no path for us. Exactly, but mm. you've tried to forge your own path, <laughs> but then when you're knocked off that, and then that you're left with that conversation with yourself, well, all right, then, well, I'm going to be a criminal. How many people who've gone on to commit really, really bad crimes have done that as well? Where they've mm. gone, do you know, like I did try, but then they put... And mm. It's just a vicious circle, isn't it? And, you know, as we move on, it's it's hard to get out of. Yeah, I think at that point in my life, I had a real chip on my shoulder as well. Like, I'd been fucked by the system. We've had social workers. Them social workers have then left us in shitty hostels and forgot about us. Them fucking school to school to school to school to the point where they're like, we're going to take you off your ma. And I'm like, whoa, hold on a minute. These aren't on our side. So I always had like a... A, a resentment to, to that kind of that part of the system and I, f- I feel like I still do because mm. I see the police and go oh there's the police where I don't think normal people do that do they no. normal people see the police and go oh I feel safe I, I don't feel safe around the police and I still don't to this day if a police officer wants to speak to me I'm saying I don't speak to police go away because of what I've been through lad but I feel like at that point in my life now I've gone like okay I'm going all out and I've seen a real change like the people I went to school with. Oh, look, there's John from school. What's happening, John? Oh, there's Shem. Oh, because with that life, you get you gain maybe a bad reputation, or people know what you're about, or the hear things what you've done on the streets. And I felt like the way I looked at myself was the way I was getting reactions from people, like the way the police treated me, the way now people who are new from the past pretend like they don't see me or they're like, oh, I don't want to speak to him. So I started to embrace that character almost and I started mm. to have a bit of chip on my shoulder and I did think like, yeah, tsh, that's just who I am now. I'm just I'm just a fucking scumbag, let's say. You've kind of morphed into the picture that everyone else has painted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Were, were you sad where you weren't like the people that maybe, you know, that did like you on any friendships you did have when they did kind of almost look at you in a different way? Did that make you sad, did it? Or was you just Didn't like... care because I was making money. Tsh, when you're making money, the girls want to know, yeah. So I thought I was the lad and with all the boys no one wants to mess with us we're doing our thing so I didn't care mm. I just thought yeah they're just wolves that's how I used to look at it like ah he's just a pussy him. He just, he's just not about it we're mm. about it mm. but then it's not till later on you realise when you're down low the people who you fought with your mates or maybe the girls who just wanted to be with you because you're the boy where it all lay when you're down and out lad no, all of them disappear but that's why now I keep a small circle and I know who my real mates are from who's been with me when I was in the shitter situations. Mm. But to uh, progress the story, so at this point now I'm just doing everything. It's like I was getting arrested all the time on my with intent to supply charges, going to court, beating the case. I got nicked for like section 18, stabbings, going to court, the guy doesn't show up to court, walking out. So after like 15 of them, you just feel like... Untouchable. Yeah, I'm the man. No no one can say nothing to me. And then you've got your little circle and they're all doing bits. People, when you go anywhere, people know, to, look, there's them lads. People want to be with you. So there was a point where it was like, yeah, I want to be a gangster. And, and I did. I thought I did. I thought I did. But at the same time, it's still in the back of your head that I don't want my family to know what I'm doing. Because... Mm ruin your family's name not how you, mm. your mum look at you different and when I'm on like I've been on my toes before for different things pee with stabbings whatever and then you're going to see your family and your family like we don't really want you to hear there's articles about you going online saying that you stabbed someone we don't want trouble coming to mm. our house or 
So did you have like a plan? You know, like people maybe get in, I'll make X amount of dough and then I want to get out or would nah, you just enjoy the life? It was the, the lifestyle. Mm. I didn't care about money. I was enjoying the lifestyle, getting out with the lads and just doing mad bootings and fucking... I think that's because so many boy. people like sort of shit on you and you like obviously I think a little bit. you were like mm-hmm. right so I'm now going to be that person pushing down do you know what I mean rather than getting shit pushed on me I'm going to push it the, the other way do you know I what I mean I think a little bit and I think the, f- the, the adrenaline and the thrill like I was I was a drug dealer but it weren't really I didn't really like it wasn't like oh yeah but robbing drug dealers for me was the this is boss like mm-hmm. running through Ken's and being like oh my god even the boys used to be like we'd just do something and then the next day I'm ringing like I've got another one lined up here lads and they're like but we've all got money now so Mm -hmm. let's get out tonight and they're like nah so I think for me it was more like the lifestyle and the thrill how old are you at this point? I think I got kicked out of that college when I'm 16, 17 so you're talking like 17, 18, 19 at this point still still like coming Mm -hmm. into a young man Mm -hmm. yeah and then I ended up getting being wanted for that aggravated burglary, my cousin. So I'll, I'll go deeper into that because it's, it's a bit of fucking off context. Um, me, me older cousin, he he was doing a bit of bit of graft himself, and he'd um, he'd had a he'd had a stash, and he's paying the stash or whatever, and the kid who's the stash was robbing out the weed and going out and selling it on the street, and then um, because he's only a little wall, like he's just he's just a no one kids have found out oh he thinks he's grafting so someone's kicked his door off and robbed him so because he's being robbed now he's thought shit I've lost their stuff they're going to kill me so he went missing so eventually obviously my cousin's found him and fucking done him in and when he's done him in because he's had the key to his house whatever come in and done him in the kids gone to the police and gone in witness protection and that and it got went down as an aggravated burglary and said um, my cousin had broke in and stole 80 pound out the house because the police know they can't make a drug charge stick because he's not going to beat him in and leave drugs there. He's mm-hmm. not soft. He beat him up and then got off and took his stuff. But how can you make a charge stick? They, they can't just say assault because you what, get a slap on the wrist, six mm-hmm. months in jail. So he, he got nicked for the aggravated burglary and um, he pled guilty from the off-go and he, done, he got five years in jail for it. And um, <clears throat> this is the mad part. My cousins rang me from jail and ringing me like, lad, I'm in jail, bro, I'm being nicked for this thing. And I'm like, wow, I'm mad. I, I was already wanted for stabbing someone. So at this point, I'm, I'm already about the area doing my graft every day and taking chase every day. So I'm thinking, wow, I'm mad, that. One day I'm on the back of my mate's motorbike doing what we're doing. And then police have come on us and we took like a, a six, seven hour chase. Ended up in like... Six, seven hour? Yeah. Ch- so what they do was they brought the chopper over us and um, we'd be like, yeah, we'll just ring one of the lads to come with a petty can and then we'll fill it up as we're riding. Lad, what they'd do was they'd bring a second chopper out and then t- send the first one back. So we were doing petty, 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 filling it up. And at one point, the bike just wouldn't go anymore, lad. So we just ended up jumping off the bike, going on foot, and, and they got us, lad. Where, and, did, um, where, were you, where was this at this point now? Fucking, where are you running around like? I was I was grafting in like Rock Ferry and then I was grafting over here in Egbert. I had like two, mm. I had like two phones. Um, but with this chase though, I mean, where are you now? The chase started in L8. We took chase all around L8, and this is my fault. We got away and we smoked them and we hit the bike and my mates like let's get a taxi, and then I just went nah fuck this lad let's get back on the bike because I had to go over the water. I was like lad we'll just fly through the tunnel on it come on, and my mates like nah are you mad. And I'm going, lad, we smoke them every day. They're not catching us, bro. And he's like, come on then. Jump back on the bike and the chopper come out. And he's going, lad, you're a knobhead, you. <laughs> it was my fault. Like, I think we ended up in Runcorn. We ended up getting nicked in Runcorn in the middle of nowhere, running through fields and that. I got caught. My mate ended up going on for an extra three hours on foot. And, and then he caught it. He had like a mad standoff in this tunnel where all trains were coming. <laughs> so the police didn't want to go in. Casey jumped on the tracks. So they ended up getting us, and I'm thinking, shit, yeah, they're gonna bring up this stabbing thing. But they never brought it up. I'm like, okay. They're like, you want, yeah, you've been wanted for an aggravated burglary. Because I'm thinking, I'm only on the back of the bike. We got nothing on us. I'll beat this. It's me, mate. will just get a little driving ban. Nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just it's a minor. 
But then they brought up and aggravated Berg for me and brought me to St Anne's from Runcorn all the way because I thought we were just going to get let out in Runcorn and then we have to make our own way. They left me mate there but brought me to St Anne's. And then uh, I'll never forget the police officer. <clears throat> I still remember his name, he's a little scumbag. Um, You're gonna say no. <laughs> he, no, do you know why I say he's a scumbag, lad? Because he harassed my mum for years, lad, when I was on the run. This little scumbag, and you know who you are. He used to sit outside my mum's house, and uh, when a man would walk in the house, he'd kick the door off afterwards and run in with no search warrants and say that I come in the house, and that's why they were running in. Meanwhile, the police know I was in Asia. They're not dumb. And uh, he twisted my mum up a few times, took my mum's passport off her. Arrested my mum one time and left my little brother in the house on his own. He was underage, he was about 10 or something. My mum sued them and won, like, my mum got the money out the police. They just settled out of court now, but she t- she knocked it back. Um, but anyway, the police officers come to interview me and they're talking about some aggravated burglary. And I'm like, wow, I've never done a burglary in my life. What the fuck are these on about? And then it's clicked then. Wow, it's our kid. So I'm like, okay. While well, our kid was in jail, I was out for like nine months, not never being pulled, never being stopped, just whenever police come I'd get off because I thought that stabbing thing was going to come up, but it, it never. Um, so now they've got me, I'm thinking, what? I'm just going to get NFA'd and I'm going to be out tonight. They kept me, they released me. And then when they've released me, I'm thinking, yeah, if I've got bail and he got remanded, this is going to get NFA'd in a month or two. Like I've been through that process a million times and knew. So I've left the police station making my way home and I get a call off my solicitor. Can you come back to the police station? Um, the police have made a mistake here. They're supposed to remand you into custody. So I thought, what? Remand me into custody? Fuck this for a crime I haven't even done. I said, nah. So that's when I got off then and I went on the run and I just got the first train to France and then flew from France. Was there not a point to you though when you said aggravated uh, burglary that you thought it might have been for something else that you'd done? Nah. No. Nah. Like, whenever we, let's say, we rob other grafters, they can't go to the police. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. So we knew. We, like, ev- ev- every time we'd, we'd do someone, it's not like they wouldn't know who I am. Mm. We'd, be, mm. we'd be ringing them after, like, <laughs> what? Do you yeah. want to cause a problem? Nah, we don't want no trouble. Okay, leave it then. Mm. But you're not getting your shit back. Sound, mate. Where, if they were going to go to the police, they'd be saying, we're going to the police, you know, yeah, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew it was nothing to do with any of that. I knew, yeah. Mm. That's a heavy decision, lad, to just go straight away, right? Fuck it, like, yeah. France, and I'm going. Yeah. No, it, and you're still young as well, yeah. lad. It just comes back, but, like, obviously, I know you obviously think very highly of your mum, like we all do, but, mm. like, you know, at that point, you're like, you don't want to let people down. You are, you, you're not, like, just speaking to you for whatever we've been on, you're, you're not an idiot, you're a very clever person. So, so mm. what do you mean? So, for you to, like, what what strikes me the most is, like, the, the fact that you you were just sort of like, I don't care, I'm just doing whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, at that point. Yeah. So, so obviously, as we've touched on, something's obviously gone gone wrong with you. But even at, when you're starting to go on the run, are you thinking about planning a way to stay on the run? Or is it just, I'm getting as far as I can, I'm just going to delay this process? Yeah, I, I didn't think I was going to last two weeks. I thought, yeah, these will come out, they'll waste loads of police resources, and they'll nick me. And I just thought, yeah, fuck them, please they come and get me they'll be fuming that's all I mm. was thinking I was mm. thinking they're going to nick me anyway I might as well go on holiday mm. do you know yeah. when you like at that point you said, Andy said before had you resigned yourself to a life of this now like, no yeah, yeah I was all in at this yeah. point like there was yeah. no I weren't going to work in McDonald's that was for sure I had no qualifications I'd been kicked out of every school I'd ever went to then I got kicked out of that college so that was my point like yeah I mean no. what they were doing because yeah. I I've ca- I can't just work a normal job like I know I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't just be a normal sit in an office. I need like I, f- I feel like I needed to do something hands on. Mm. Maybe if I would have found something hands on like MMA, I would have figured out like oh yeah. this is my passion. I never had a passion. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with myself. So the only thing I knew what to do was the yeah. roads, lad. So when we come on to it, like, but I mean, MMA, you, you know, you're the perfect story for why you know MMA and boxing and stuff like that should be pushed on mm. children more but don't know why they don't teach it in schools oh, it's crazy. Really we've don't. had that conversation yeah, loads really of times it's, it's crazy. Right. you don't have to you know you don't have to get punched in the face you don't have to compete you don't have to fight to learn it i think you the, the brutal side of the sport people just see that and go yeah my kid's not doing that mm. Mm. 
could be jiu-jitsu, could be wrestling, yeah. could just be drills. You don't have to spar. There's mm. other ways of training without sparring, but... Yeah, we'll get on. So yeah. to get on to that. So when you get to... Obviously, do you initially go to Asia? Or was it just straight um, to Asia? I went to France. I think I went from France... You the train first. Here we go again. This is the maddest thing, yeah. Do you know when I've got to the Eurostar? Because it was brand new. The Eurostar just only come out, like, recently. There was this... There was two queues... And like I'm, I'm clocking everyone because I'm thinking, oh, what if CID have followed me? What if this? What? Because I'm on the run now on Palo. I'm about to get on the thing. I'm thinking, what if they're at the borders? And you know what? Pothead thinking, oh my Palo shit. And I'm looking at the woman who's taking the passports, and she's taking passports and scanning them. So I'm thinking, oh, she might scan my passport, and it might come through that I'm fingered. But then I looked in the queue next, and there was some guy, and he was just going. So I just went, boom, swapped to that queue. I thought, fuck that. Giving me passport, I'm like this. <laughs> you know right, mate? <laughs> yeah, just going to France. <laughs> and he's just gone. Next. And I just jumped on the Eurostar. And now I'm on the Eurostar and I'm thinking, when I get to the border, there's going to be a problem. They're going to be like passport stamps. Mm. Got out to train in France. And I was like, not a stamp in my passport, not a check, not nothing. And I was like, what? That was fucking easier than I thought it'd be. So then I, I ended up having a little mooch around France and that, and then getting a plane to India, and then I think it was India, India or Dubai, I think it was India though, then from India, connecting flight, and I went to uh, Bangkok, I spent a few days in Bangkok and that, linked up with a few people I know over there, I don't really party or not, like, it's not my thing, I never have, never don't drink, never took a drug in my life, but they're all big party heads, they're like, come out, come out, come out, so I'm like, I have couldn't say no because they fucking got me this big hotel, got me nice. So I've come out with them. I'm in, I'm in Bangkok and they're like trying to push all these brass on me, lad. And like, it's not me. <laughs> n- n- never shagged the brass in my life, never will. Like, it's just a major turn off. If she doesn't want it, I don't want it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> they're like, what do you reckon of her? And I'm like, yeah, she's all right, eh? What about her then? Yeah, she's all- and now I'm making shitty excuses. <laughs> oh no, she's got moody teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh not here she's too skinny oh not here she's too curvy <laughs> and then now they're like bringing birds up going just feel her ass <laughs> and I'm like oh look lads the footy's on because the World Cup was on or something I'm like the footy's on let's watch the footy now and they're like nah fuck that <laughs> we're going here next we're going here ah oh, lad they took me to this one mad gaff bro you go in there <laughs> lad it was mad it was mad you go in there and there's literally 25, 30 girls on a stage and each one of them's got a number on the chest. And when you go in there, you pay to get ping pong balls. And I didn't have a fucking clue. I'm like, wow, this is a bit mad. So me mates, I didn't know you'd have to pay to get ping pong balls. I thought they'd just give you them when you come in. So they give you like, me, me mates got like five buckets. <laughs> Where people come in and are getting like little little buckets. He's come, he five. bought five big buckets, but I didn't know. I thought you just got them for nothing. I thought like, oh, they must know him. He's a regular or something. <laughs> and people get the ping pong and go and throw it up on the stage. And if the girls catch a ping pong, that relates to one US dollar. So when you throw one up, they all go mad and like, no, it's mine. Do you know what I mean, lad? It's class. It's class. They're all fucking naked. No one's got clothes on. <laughs> it's mine. So look, I-, I didn't know you had to pay for these ping pong. So my mates m- must have spent fucking silly money on this big fucking five big cases. Lad, I got all five cases and just went, whoom, and threw them all on this. St- look, they all started kicking each other and punching each other. They're all like this, getting handfuls of ping pongs. And look, the club owner come over and goes, mate, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like... Don't know, mate, it's my first day in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> and even my mate was like, lad, what are you doing? They're going to be on us all night now. Because afterwards, they come off the stage. Lad, we, had about, loaded, lad, yeah. we had about 30 brass around the table. <laughs> and I'm just going, ah, oh, my mum's ringing me. I need to go home, me boys. I've got to get off. I ended up going back to the hotel. And then when I went back to the hotel, I thought, I can't stay here with these. <laughs> I did two nights or one night with them. I thought, I can't Mad do this. I cannot do this. Bangkok's not for me. I knew straight away, like, I don't like Bangkok. <laughs> I can't go over that. It's not for me, this. But my dad, my dad was staying in Koh Samui on a little island off Thailand. And he's like, why don't you come over here with me? I'll get you your own little gaff and that. And I thought, I wanted to go to Malaysia and see my brother and stay with my brother because obviously he moved out. We hadn't seen him for a good while. He's busy working. He's legit and not doing his thing. But a fourth, I don't want to go to my brother and then bring this heavy police presence 
and now they're looking at me brother where'd you get this house from where'd you get this cat so forth I stay away from me brother go to see me dad in Costa Mui get me own little gaff and that they nick me they nick me on my own then do you know what I mean I've went to Costa Mui we must have been there for a good eight months and then after eight months I'm like these aren't coming there's an extradition law from Thailand if they were coming they would have got me while I was in Costa Mui there was these scousers down the road who were grafting and one day SWAT team just come and just doom the door off and just got them all really yeah yeah lad and, and like I, I've woke up through the night and heard it all and thought like what they're coming for me boys <laughs> I've had all tasers and fucking mad knives in the gaff, I'm like throwing them out the window and I'm thinking, wow, it's not extra charges, get rid of these. <laughs> Come out in the street and that in my boxes, thinking like, fuck it, I'm going to get nicked anyway. And all these scousers were getting carted off, I'm going, wow, yeah, fucking hell, I didn't even know they were grafting. <laughs> what are you doing those eight months then in Coast Movie? Just living life, bro. Just, just waiting though, basically. To, yeah. You know, just waiting yeah. for it to, to all come Had a bit of saving. Family are there also, my dad and that. They just like, I mean, not like a normal day, just on the beach, just going. Um, lad, I, w- I was playing footy. I've always been into footy. I was playing footy, just doing bits of footy. Yeah, lifting weights every day. And yeah, just going to the beach and just just chilling, lad. It's like, you got to think, like, the lifestyle that I'd just come from was like, every day waking up six, seven, six, five, six in the morning. Lad, I used to, for, for five, four or five years, I used to sleep fully dressed. Shoes on, clothes on. Sleep fully dressed, and then boom, just in case anything happened, you're ready, you're active. Really, yeah. I swear to God, bro. I'd I mean, wake up, a, w- wake up, get out there, do whatever we're doing for the day. You get home one a.m. and then you have your little four hours kip, and that was my life every every single day, bro. Every no days off, no Sundays, fucking chilling, nothing. So now I'm in Thailand, and it's like, ah, oh, deload, mm. rest, relax. I'm living life. I'm eating good food. I'm not skipping meals. So a skinny lad where you're out every day just you mm. don't even think to eat lad you're just stressed bro when you're in a place like that do you not have any moments where like you know the sort of well, I don't say normal you but you come back to yourself and you think like what am I doing like when you're, do, out, when you're when, home no, alone do, by yourself and you've yeah. got like you know you're on a beach or something you haven't got the chaos around you you might, you might just be having a minute to yourself or something is there ever that point where you think like what am I doing I think I had serious PTSD boys really yeah yeah like first night in Thailand and I'm sleeping in my trainees with my clothes on mm. I didn't even get under the quilt it's hard to push that and it's away, fucking man. like 30 degrees I'm sweating my being off <laughs> and I'm thinking nah man has to be ready <laughs> like what it is a mad transformation <laughs> to going from that Crazy, in fucking Rock Ferry to then Koh yeah. no one's after you no one's you know yeah. anymore and you can just relax I was, I was in Thailand we're still, we're still chilling with four phones I wasn't even grabbed but it was still in the mindset. Yeah. Different at BBM, your iPhone, your this, your little blower. Once you're all, as you say, though, once you're all in, it's, it's hard to just go, right, I'm, I'm not doing that no more. Yeah. I'm just going to mm-hmm. go down the beach and have a, you know, yeah. sunbathe for a few hours. It's, it's hard, but that's what I was thinking. Is there a moment where you'd think, like, I'm, I can do more than this, or, like... Nah. You're I still never, in? Never, lad, I was still at that little chip on my shoulder of, you, you're never going to be that, you mm. know? You can't be no CEO, who are you, lad? You're not going to be no yeah. fucking OBE. You're not going to be fucking one of these Londoners who fucking... Mm. I was just a that's, scouser, that's lad. That's the it? thing, innit, though? Like, that again, I've said this word a few times, that's a sad part, innit? Because you are mm. sort of just told, you can't be this. Mm. this yeah. This life's just not Society's for you. Society's you know labelled you up and yeah. you just can't get rid of it, can But then you? once you start believing it yourself and you start telling yourself that, that you're living proof of how hard it is to drop it because... You're then like you know you're in a place like that, and then you sh- and you're still in the mindset of I can't do none of that. I can't yeah. be that person. I can't be a good person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's you know testament to you that you've eventually got to where you've got to, but it's such a dangerous like. But you're not mindset, like um, are you able to chill, or is there still a bit of you going? Oh, Never. I'll, I'll get a graft up here, and I'll get it on it again, and I'll start. You know, you like. I didn't want a graft because it's the death penalty. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. It's no. not now. It's not now. I was still smoking weed. I was still fogging big. I was walking down the streets, fogging big whiffers, and people would be like, "Are you mad?" Oh, so you're not even smoking out there either. Nah, death penalty, brother. That That's much of a yeah. joint done. You're getting hung. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, I would have just swear. Nah. But um, I didn't want to graft. I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to bring no qualms to my family, and I didn't need to really. I was I could survive, and that I was nice. Mm. Cost of living's cheap over there. Yeah. I had a nice house. I had a maid. Mm. I was living the life but what you're saying about switching off definitely the slightest noise you're up mm. what was that uh, this is me now I'm, I'm, I'm going now yeah. getting on the phone yo lad I think the police outside <laughs> yeah. and you're going out and it's the fucking chickens running in the back garden or something you're like oh not Probably again is a form yeah. of PTSD that you know yeah I used to, lad I used to do mad things like first night in the hotel 
bed facing the door. Like, like mm. win- window, where's the exits? It's a separation. Where's the fire yeah. escape? Like everything. That's it's a separation of cra- character as well in it though, because like as you said before, when you were, you know, you started to enjoy the the reputation you were getting. That character's not you when you're on your own. None of us. When nah, we're all on our own, yeah. it's different, isn't it? But yeah. that separation of cra- mm. character's so hard, isn't it? Because you sitting in a room in Bangkok on your own is not the same lad who's you know in L8 just walking around and everyone's scared of. Do you know what I mean? It, mm. It's hard to separate them Sometimes two people. people used to tell me that. Like, m- like you'd have certain mates who maybe weren't in that lifestyle who I knew from when I was younger. Yeah. And maybe I'd go and pass by them a few times, throw them a bit of change or whatever. That was your mind, bum, bum. And they'd be like, lad, it's not I, you. I, how, do you, how do you do it, bro? And mm. I'd be like, don't know, you just, you just fucking do it. And they'd be like, nah, I don't believe it, bro. No. Especially when they hear stories from the street, maybe that are being also exaggerated, and then they're coming to me and telling me my own story, and I'm like, "Where'd yeah. you hear that one from?" It's hard to believe, mm. just speaking to you now, that you could do like really bad stuff because you just, mm. yes, energy doesn't lie, does it? And I mean, yeah. I guess you can. It is quite hard to believe yeah, you would yeah. have done like really bad stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I guess that's for someone who's grown up. Would you? It would have been hard to to look at you and go, "Well, I know everyone says you know be wary of them, but." That's that's not the person I know. Mm, yeah. you know. Was there any was the a party that thought it weren't? Like, you know, when when people like that from you know, people who were legit would go, you know, Shem, that's not you. There's a point where I couldn't separate the two at, at a certain point. In the beginning there was a separation definitely, like mm. but there was a point where you that you where that it became blurred. Yeah, yeah. You, that becomes half you. It's just it is what mm. it is. Mm. So yeah. what's next after Kosamu then? So now I'm like I'm fed up of Kosamu. You walk down the street there's that same old lady sitting on the chair outside the shop. This guy's going to drive past on the bike like clockwork. It's a proper chilled island. Like, there's nothing going on there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can't. I'm not on holiday anymore now, Olivia. So it's it's, it's not the same. Yeah. So I was like, on the phone to me, brother. Yo, I'm coming to KL, lad. I'm coming to Kuala Lumpur. Let's go. Jumped on a plane. Landed in Kuala Lumpur. Straight off the plane. Straight into a taxi. Jumped in a taxi. The guy, where you want to go, la? I said, no way. You've been to Liverpool, you lad, saying la. <laughs> wow, what's happening, our kid? And he just goes, you know speak English, I know take you. And I'm like, lad, what are you on about, brother? I'm speaking English now, I'm from England, me, you know, mate. And he just goes, sorry, I know take you, I know take you. I didn't know in Malaysia they say la as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <I can. laughs> so I've jumped out into another taxi, phone on loudspeaker to me brother, speak to him, lad. He's give the address, whatever. I'm on the way to me brothers. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, for us in Liverpool, big football culture. We've always played footy. Like, before even the crime thing, that's what I used to do in London. I played for a good team and that. I used to play for um, this this team. Then they linked me up with Tottenham. I was training with Tottenham and that. I was, I was half a decent player when I was younger. It was probably the roads that fucked me up. <laughs> um, so... I'm still into footy at this point. I'm not now. I kind of hate it now, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, Me and you both. Yeah. But anyway, another story for another day. I'm in this taxi on the way to me brothers. Just landed in Malaysia. I've got all my suitcases with me. We get close to the city centre and we drive past this footy pitch. And I'm like to the driver, stop, stop, mate. Stop, 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 stop. Pull over here. Go on, here's your money. Fuck off. So hold my bags onto the pitch. I can see all these kids playing footy. Whipped me footy boots out my bag. And I'm like, boys, let me play with yous. And they're all like, none of them really spoke English and that. And they're all like, eh, eh. the manager's come over, he could speak English. He was like, mate, eh, we play for the government. This is a government team. He's like, that's a hospital. Our team's a hospital. We, we, Everyone here works in the hospital. You can't really play with us. And I'm just like, you know, Scouts is like, we just blag our way to anything, <laughs> lad. I'm like, yeah, do you know Steven Gerrard? Yeah, man, he's my cousin, lad. <laughs> Fucking, I'm, I'm over here now. I'm actually with the team, the team that... And I'm just, I'm just, just <laughs> chatting shit to him, lad. And he's just like, oh, you from Liverpool? They're all like showing, yeah, Liverpool. He's just one of them had a Liverpool tattoo. He's like, yeah, yeah, Liverpool. I'm like, sand. I put my boots on. <laughs> <laughs> I put my boots on, left all my bags at the side and that. <laughs> and it was mad, lad. Like, these play every single day. They were half decent, but they had no clue of like, like shit you just learn. Because it's our culture. Like, mm. you're a defender. The guy's attacking. Show him the line, don't show him the inside so he can't cut in and get a shot on goal. And I'm showing them all little things like, what are you doing, lad? Why are you letting him just cut in on his right foot and shoot? Show him the line so when he when he goes the other way, he can only cross it or you pressure him and it, it, you get the ball or it goes out, it's less dangerous. And they're all like, 
wow. And now I'm like head coach, bro. <laughs> They're all asking me questions, and I'm like, so look, boys, this is what we, you're going to play a 4 3 2. And then, yeah, and then you go down, and, and lad, I'm just bossing it, lad. We've got into a match at the end. Head coach. And I just had the worldie, lad. The game was like, no goals, but it's a ball on the cone. So to score, you've got to hit the ball. Now, I've played with this team loads afterwards and it's hard to hit the ball, but I don't know why. It must have been the confidence that day. I hit that ball three times. So these are like, what? Who's this fucking guy, bro? <laughs> Turning, hitting the ball off the cone. Lad, it's hard to do to it because it's only a little ball on a cone. So afterwards, they're like, what? Yeah, they're all chilling with me and that. Some of them don't even speak English, but they're still trying to like, hey, hello, hi. <laughs> and they're all buzzing off me, bro, lad. It was mad, you know. Look, it was mad. So I'm like, I'm like, look, give me your number and I'll come and play again. They're like, yeah, it sounds defo. Make sure you come, make sure you come back. <laughs> so whatever, I've come, gone back to ours. Linked up with me, brother, bum, bum, bum. Jet lagged, slept for fucking however many hours. Come back to the pitch. In my mind now, like, I can play with them, but I can't join the team, do you know what I mean? Because I don't work in the hospital. I don't have a fucking a visa to be there. I'm on a holiday visa. But I've showed up at the thing. And I'm like, what's happening, boys? Manager comes over to me. He's like, look, I've got you this card, yeah. If anyone asks, you're a doctor. <laughs> and I'm on the team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Dr. Shem. Yeah, Dr. Shem, lad. <laughs> Coming like Dr. Sebi. <laughs> and I just joined the team and I was just playing footy every day, lad. And no fucking way. going to all these playing police, playing the firefighters, playing the army. Mad, bro. Crazy. <laughs> My God, Didn't even it. mean for it to happen. So I'm with this fucking government team. Playing every day, like it was fucking mad, bro. <laughs> that so, is mad. That is yeah, mad. yeah. I think we just know how to blag it, lad. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> like Asia's very conservative, and people aren't really like boisterous. And if, if you say something, you mean it. Mm. Where we just chat shit, lad. Mm, yeah. And I'm just there, just filling them full of hope, lad. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna win the league. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, <laughs> put me up front, and we've won. Like, to bear in mind, the team was like bottom three in the table or something. And I'm like, don't worry, boys, we've won this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Um, How did the goal like the footy was good with, with them? Was it like, do you, Lado, do you know what? I was smashing goals with them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be like, still making. It'd be like, I've scored a hat trick, but we lost 15 3. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, well, then, lads, good game, boys. Shaking hands and that. Opposite teams are like, wow, who's this English guy taking pictures with me? And then after the game, oh. I'm like, <laughs> 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 Shit, <like that. laughs> swear, lad, it was fucking lad, it was mad. But um, yeah, so first night, I'm in Kuala Lumpur. My brother's like, lad, I haven't seen you for ages. We're going out, and I'm like, oh, lad, you know I don't go out, bro. And he's like, well, you want to watch the footy, don't you? Because of the time zone, the footy's on at like three a.m. Liverpool were playing Arsenal or someone. So I'm like, yeah, do you want to watch the footy? He's like. Well, I'll take you to a place where we can watch the footy. So I'm like, yeah, it's sand. My brothers took me to this club. It was a bit lively in there, but there was a bar part. So I'm just sitting at the bar. The bar gets a bit busy, so I took a step back. I'm in the middle of the little bar dance floor, but there's a, the club part over there. It was all right. I'm just chilling there, watching the footy now, chilling like this. Mom, everything's going on. And lad, people are just coming up to me like birds and like stroking my chest and that. And I'm like, oh, get off me, love, whatever. And I'm like, next minute a bird pinches me ass. I'm like, what? Lad, before half time, about six birds have come on to me. I'm thinking, yeah, I must be doing bits today. I'm <laughs> getting my phone out and that, taking selfies and looking at the picture going, I must be on form today, me. Lad, <laughs> fucking after. I've ran over to my brother and that, like, lad, the birds in here are on me, you know, lad. I don't know what it is, bro. It must be the scouts thing or something. They're just feeling the vibe. And he's like, oh, what? Didn't you know? And I'm like, what? He's like, no, you see this nightclub? Yeah, every woman in here is a brass. Oh. And I'm just like, oh, lad, get me out of here, bro. What are you doing, lad? I didn't even watch the rest of the game, bro. I just got home. I just walked home. back to my brother's. My brother gave me a key and I watched it in the house. <laughs> the club's called Beach Club. Anyone who knows about Beach Club in Malaysia? Is it that bad for brasses out there? Is it here in Asia? <laughs> like, it's, do you know what? It's, it's, it's not all of Asia. But it's just like, especially when you go to Thailand, mm. like, if they have a daughter, they're kind of happy. Because they can daughter can give massages. Yeah, it's a if you have, culture, isn't yeah, it? if you have a son, it's a bit harder because the poor, bro. Mm. Mm. How are you gonna make money, bro? Some mm. of them come from yeah. real poor villages and that. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. send now their their kids to like Malaysia, Philippines, boom, 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 to go and be fucking 
mm. blasters lad it's mad I'll send them to the main cities and they just love white guys bro and over there I'm a white guy <laughs> to them so you do lad over there you just look you just go over there opportunities are unreal <laughs> like my mate he teaches English he doesn't even speak real good English he's Russian <laughs> <laughs> Serious, <laughs> serious ways. Like that googling himself. Look, he, get, he, he, <laughs> no, he's he gets he gets on the phone to me, brother. Please, you te- teach me two words, brother. I go teach kids tomorrow. I'm like, um, lad, I'm not really an English teacher. You know, he goes, brother, don't worry, your English good. Wow. Look, you know, get a white guy over there, smash it. Opportunities. You're the endless. model. You're then and you want. You're listening to this boards. podcast now. Just Google yeah. one way flights yeah. to Malaysia. Trips Trust to me. Kuala Lumpur. Trust me. Did he get beach club? <laughs> Especially <laughs> Thailand. Thailand. The, it's nice, bro. And yeah. cost of living's cheap. Like, mm. the, the life out there was just mad. But yeah, I'm now. I'm in Malaysia, just doing me thing. Everything's going well. I'm with my brother. I haven't seen him for a long time. Um, and because I'm in Malaysia on a tourist visa. You only get three months, and after f- 90 days, it is every 90 days, you gotta leave the country, and then you gotta come back into the country. So every 90 days, I go to a new country and go and see a different part of Southeast Asia. So um, I remember one day, um, I've always loved MMA. I've yeah. always watched MMA, even when I was doing what I was doing. You'd be like, ah, UFC's on tonight, lads. Go and watch it in mine. I used to watch all mad other promotions as well. Like I was just into it. I didn't really want to do it. Like a few of my cousins. Back when I was in Liverpool, they used to do kickboxing and that. They still do. My cousin Elliot, shout out to Elliot, Ashley, all of them. And uh, they'd be like, lad, come down the gym, lad, learn how to fight. And I'd be like, lad, I'm rolling around on the floor like a girl, lad, I'm not doing none of that. And that was my mentality back then. But to watch it, I enjoyed it. So I'm out in Malaysia, done my visa, run to Singapore. <clears throat> and while I'm walking down the street in Singapore, I just seen this big, huge glass window, lad. It was like one big, giant window. And when I walked past, lad, it was all these guys doing jiu-jitsu. And, like, I didn't know. I knew what jiu-jitsu was because I knew, like, obviously, Hoist Gracie, the UFC, all of that. But I didn't know jiu-jitsu or not, do you know what I mean? So I'm watching and I'm like, all I knew was white belt shit, black belt's good. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm looking for the black belts to watch. And I'm watching the wrapping guys off, the choking guys out. It must have been, like, an open mat because they were just going at it. Mm. And the ladder must have stood there for 20 minutes, bro, just watching. And then being like, wow, what am I doing? I'm fucking hell, I need to get back to the hotel, blah, blah, blah. Now, subconsciously, that must have stuck with me in my mind because even now I've still remembered that, do you know what I mean? I thought, wow, it's sick, Dad, I'd love to try that one day. Whatever, thought nothing of it. Months down the line later, I'm in Malaysia. Walking down the street, I just see this sign, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I just thought, you know what? I'm not doing nothing anyway. My brother goes to work every day and leaves me on my own. I'm fucking bored. I'm playing for this footy team, but it's it's it, it, it's not. I've got more. I've got after that footy. I've just got loads mm. of free time. I'm just I'm not on holiday now. It's I'm living there. It's boring. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'll run to ours, get some change. But I flew back in the gym. Gym was empty. There was this woman on the desk. She was the uh, yoga teacher. I flew in there and I'm like, look. I want to buy a full year membership and I want to buy a gi. And she's like, have you ever done this before? And I'm like, nah. But in my mind, I'm thinking, if I pay for it, I won't scarf. I force myself to go because I'm a tight bastard. I'd be like, nah, I'm getting my money's worth. Where if I go to a free trial class and I don't like it, I'm not coming back. Because I'd be like, nah, this is shit, this. I'll I'll make some light to stroke my ego. So I'm like, nah, love, I want to, I want to fucking, I'm all in. And she's like, nah, just come to the free trial tonight. I'm like, nah. We had a little back and forth and she blagged me to come to the free trial. So, <clears throat> gone home, sitting at home, like, oh, I can't wait for this, can't wait for this. Got me fucking, I had like spats and rash guard from footy anyway, you know, the long ones. Mm. So come in, come in, me long rash guard, me long spats. And I don't know anyone in the gym. The only person I know is the woman I've spoke to and she's the yoga teacher. I didn't know that at the time, obviously. But you know yoga people, they're like all nice and friendly and that auntie, she's come over and she's hooked me. So now I'm like, I've hooked her like, oh, how are you? I'm speaking to her. So now to everyone else's mind in the room, I'm with her, I'm a yoga guy or something, aren't I? I'm a yoga wanker. <laughs> 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 so they probably thought, yeah, we'll fucking kill him. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, this is how deluded I was, boys, in my mind. I've had fights and that, you know, I've had a few street fights. I lift weights every day. I play footy, I'm in shape someone's getting their head punched in that's what in my mind I'm like I'm running through people 
we done the warm up. I'm breathing out my ass. <laughs> 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 like, wait, wait there, coach. Let me get some water. But I don't understand. Like, jiu jitsu is flowy and technical, and I'm just like <clears throat> picking people up and that. You do that for thirty seconds, and you go. <sighs> Mm. I'm breathing out my ass in the warm up only. Afterwards, alright, time to roll. Lad, they're putting me with people. I'm thinking like it's a fight and that. I'm fucking dragging <laughs> people and that. I'm fucking nearly kicking them and that. You can't punch your kicking jiu jitsu. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck was up. So I'm going hard and the coach must have seen it. You know what I mean? So he's like, go with him. Go with him. Lad, I'm getting smoked. I got choked out by little kids, little twelve-year-olds. These, you know, oh. jujitsu prodigies who were up from bed and bolo and taking you back and fucking bow and arrows and like doing all <laughs> choking me with his own sleeves and that, <laughs> wrapping his belt around me and that. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? <laughs> got choked out by some bird. Like it was, it was bad. And um, after that, like I, I've, I, I, my jujitsu coach, lad, I'm so close to him. He's like, he's like my dad or something. Do you know what I mean? He proper taught me a lot. I feel like. If I would never have met him, maybe I wouldn't have went as far as I've come in the sport. Like, he really taught me how to be an adult and fucking grow up. Mm. Like, I did have a big chip on my shoulder, and I feel like he's a big part of changing me. Um, with, what, like, his mentality, like, kind of instilled it into me, everyday training with him. Well, I got to roll with him on my first ever class. In my whole life of knowing him, I've never seen him let a beginner roll on their first day. Never mind him actually roll with a beginner. So I think that day he wanted to smoke me. Like mm. he must have seen me going hard with the students, probably fucking muscling out of arm bars with twelve year olds. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought, yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm rolling with him. He's being dead flowy, being dead nice. He's playing guard. I'm on top, and I'm just like, Ugh. and he just went boop, threw up a triangle, and I'm like, Ugh. first time I'd ever been in a triangle in my life. Didn't have a fucking clue what a triangle was. I'm like, what? I know how to escape this, and I just picked him up and just went. And slammed him. Oh my fucking god! Slams aren't allowed in jujitsu. Slam, slamming someone's like a big really? no. Like if you slam someone in jujitsu in the gym, you're probably fighting. Yeah, it's like really, yeah. it's like throwing oh, an elbow yeah. in Muay Thai. Oh, okay. You can throw them in the fight, but elbow your training partner in the gym, mm. and you're fighting. So he just went, <sighs> bro. He was like submitting me, and when I'd go tap 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 tap, he'd keep it for an extra few seconds. And then he'd let it go and carry on rolling. Where normally you tap, you reset, and you shake hands, and you go again. Nah. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> Lad, he schooled me. He fucked me up. And I went home. I'm sitting on the couch. Lights off. In my boxies. <laughs> just going. <laughs> I'm like, that. what the fuck just happened to me? <laughs> nah, this can't be real, this boy's... I'm getting on the phone and that's the lad's like, lads, he's not going to believe this, you know. <laughs> Lad, he's only about 57 kilos. Or so. Nah, look, boys, look. I can't straighten my arms. Look, I was like that. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm sitting, big ice things on, strapped round to me like that. Ah. And I put a new then, like, I don't know what he's done to me, but I want to be able to do that to other people. Mm. I had no aspirations of competing. I had no aspirations of transitioning to MMA. I didn't want to be a fighter. I just thought, wow, this is sick. And I just started showing up like I was there the next day. And I showed up at the 7 a.m. class after just finishing the night class. And you could see when I walked in, he must have just thought, is he mental? Mm. I just battered him. Like, you know what it sounds like, lad? It sounds a little bit like the karate kid in the, yeah, on the yeah. old fella. Do you know what I mean? It lad, does, it lad. is, yeah. Like, he's, he's shown someone, maybe, you know, like a young kid who thought, you know, he's on a wrong path here. I need to kind yeah. of break him and, and mould him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, lad, it's like, I come in and it's like there was a like a vibe like oh it's gonna kick off <laughs> like you know right lads so i'm like whatever i'm doing the classes lad i just started showing up every day three times a day because i was just like i want to get good i want to get good i'm shit now but i know if i keep coming i'll get good yeah lad i'm ringing my manager like <coughs> can't come to training tonight fella i'm not well showing up to games only swerving footy and just going to jiu-jitsu and then it's like, after two weeks of showing up every single day, the coach is like, come here, lad, let me show you something. And now he started to give me a little, because I was ferocious, bro, I was aggressive and explosive, natu naturally explosive. So now he's like, wow, this guy's a bit of an athlete, actually, and he's mm. showing up. So fucking mm. I can build someone here. Obviously, when you're a coach, lad, you want to work with people who want to learn. Yeah, you mm. see so that. many people show up and just show up, and they're mm. just like, oh, I'm just doing this after work. 
So yeah. like he's teaching something and some lads are like, well, what did you do tonight? Oh, you, oh yeah, we'll go for some bevies after. He's talking and I'm like, why? No, but how? <laughs> yeah. But why would I do that? Oh shit, so you'd break my arm from there? Show me then, I don't believe you. Show. Okay, tap, 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 all right, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> so he's seen that in me and must have thought, yeah. I can make him a savage. Yeah. So now he started showing me shit, and lad, it's like, it's like magic. You know, when you see a magician do something, you go, nah, that's not real. Do that again. That's what I was like, bro. Yeah. I was like a kid just seeing a magician, and lad, I just talked to it, bro. I just was there, 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 nonstop. After two months, he was like, you competing this weekend and I'm like nah I'm not <laughs> he's like no you're not I've signed you up you're going so I'm like wow mad this went there competed and lad I just the, he just made me drill this one arm bar forever can, can remember it boom and then what to do when the guy stacks to counter the arm bar to finish it still and bro I just went to the competition and just went arm bar arm bar um, and just finished everyone with the exact same armbar and I just left them at him was just like wow did you see that Bruno like what and then from then on I was just all in I just knew like I've got bad feel like fucking playing this armbar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I it's my like obviously I, I'm only like a, I haven't learned anything but I was saying to you when yeah. we went to UFC London Paul Craig done a very similar thing and I was saying to him lad do you know how sick that is oh, we, uh, savage uh, oh, it's just savage it's the like for me it's my favourite martial art to watch like I know sometimes Same. I introduce people to UFC or whatever and they go can Boring. we just watch them stand and bang I was like no get them up lad yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm but, the same yeah I, I just I'm obsessed by it but um, was that the first time in years that you've been humbled then at the start of that oh, for like, sure for sure yeah first time in a long time like I can't even I've never been humbled more than that ever in my life ever 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 yeah. and I feel like that's the point where you either quit or you're all in yeah. and for me it was like all in I'm not one of these people I can't do like I can't do something and do it as a hobby I'm either like 100% gonna do it or I'll just swerve it I can't I'm not a 50-50 or one yeah. foot in one foot out I, I don't know maybe it's just part of my personality mm. and as soon as I left the mat I was just like lad pff, this is me that I mm. want to keep doing this and I just kept showing up to the gym like it was probably detrimental but for the first year I trained seven days a week, three times a day. Even on Sundays, we're still training. Like, it fucked me back up after a year. But I just wanted it, lad. I just mm. wanted to learn this jiu-jitsu thing. I just wanted to be... I'm watching all jiu-jitsu black belts. And, like, my professor put me onto this guy, Herbert Santos. He's, like, from the favelas. He's, like, in jiu-jitsu, everyone's dead nice and respectful. And I always used to be like, lad, why doesn't he just fucking tell him, lad? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, lad, why is he shaking his hand, lad? They're about to have a straight there. <laughs> and he'd be like, no, look... So he put me onto this guy here, but Santos, and he's like a, just a jujitsu savage. Yeah. He's like from the streets. He just, he's just like. So for me, I was watching him and just going like, wow. And then he showed me like a picture with him and Herbert when Herbert was young, and my professor was like, when I was a black belt, he was a blue belt, and he come to the tournaments and carried me bag for me because I was a black belt. And then ever since, like, he was like, he still is my favorite grappler to watch. So I was just like, now I'm studying all these guys, and I'm just like, this is sick. Um, and then I just started travelling, competing. I was doing all local tournaments, and lad, I just go like you do. I do my weight class. I do open weight class, gi and no gi. So it's like you have four fights in your weight class, four fights in your open weight class. Then you fight no gi, four fights in your weight class, four fights. In, and I'm just look. I was just running through everyone. I was just finishing, like not even winning on points, just submitting everyone with the same boring shit. And I'm just like literally just focusing on basics and just smoking everyone and I was just like what am I good or are these shit <laughs> at first I just thought like these guys must be shit mm. but then when I'm with Bruno and I'm like all these travelling black belts come through the gym this guy's from America this guy's from there and he's only a small fella like I'll give him his due some of these guys are coming in at 120 kilos and that and he just wrapped them up bro mm. and they're black belts and I'd just be like wow and I'm not going to name no names but it wasn't until like a UK based guy come in and I'm like wow I know this guy he's a fucking world champion whatever and he just smoked him and yeah. I'm just like wow I've got a fucking like you said he is Mr Miyagi to me yeah, lad, do you yeah. know what I mean and um, I'm doing all these jiu-jitsu tournaments and then he's like look I want us to start going international I want us to go IBJJF it's like the best tournaments he's like there's a big one coming up in Singapore Dumao uh, do my one day and ADCC the next day he's like I want you to go and compete there so I'm like come ahead then we'll go are you going to come with me though 
And he's like, yeah, look, come with Jess. So I'm like, sick. We've gone over to Singapore. And all the gym, like, Singapore is proper grappling based. Like, yeah. Jiu Jitsu in Singapore is huge. Like, one championship's based out of Singapore. UFC do events in Singapore. Every gym in Singapore, the Jiu Jitsu coaches are all from Brazil. They're all, like, yeah. good world champions or they're all someone, do you know what I mean? So, when we've landed there, Bruno, he's he's from the favelas in Brazil, just like all them cunts, so they all know each other. They're like, oh, we're Mao, speaking to each other, bum bum. And I'm just like, I don't speak Portuguese, I've forgot it all, I don't remember any of it, so I don't know what the fuck they're saying. But, you know when you pick up a vibe, they're all speaking to each other, they're all the different gym owners and different coaches, and I can see Bruno like, no, 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 bro. I'm pointing at me. Like bigging you up, like? Yeah, so I'm thinking like, and that, as soon as they've all got off, I've said, lad, what did they just say about me then? Because I'm thinking they're slagging me off or something. I'm like, what did they just say about me then? He's like, forget about it, lad, focus on the tournament. And I'm like, lad, just tell me, bro, because it'll do me head in. And he's like, look, they said you're good and that, but you're not Singapore good. Like, you come here today, you're going to get smashed. And I've just gone, yeah, is that what they said? <laughs> look, you don't understand. I didn't, I didn't, like, I was coming there to, to win, maybe if it took, if I got two points, I would have stalled it out and been like, because oh, these guys are good. Some of them have been to the Worlds and that and won medals and shit. So if I would have come up on the scoreboard, I would have like stalled it out. But now I'm just thinking, nah. Fuck this, I'm coming for heads. <laughs> and lad, look, submitted everyone, open weight, division, everyone, smoked everyone. A few guys had their little name and that. Uh, ran through them all. And afterwards, I'm just like, wow, that's sick. And then look, that's when like, cause like I'm a blue belt at that point. That's when it's like, my name just blew up. Like, who's this Scouser? Obviously, you had people like Darren doing his thing as well. Mm -hmm. So now maybe off the back of the Scouse thing, everyone's like, who's this Scouser in Asia? He's winning all these tournaments. So then it was like, I just started doing all these mad tournaments, beating everyone. I went and done super fights with black belts as a blue belt. And like, my name just fucking grew. And then I'm coming back to my gym and my gym owner's like, you're starting to get traction and that. He's like, look, if you start promoting yourself on social media, you can train here for nothing. So I'm like, sound, yeah, I will do. Made an Instagram, I'm fucking on the run, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm not asked anyway. <laughs> made a Twitter, made a Facebook. My followers are all going up. I'm like, wow, this is mad, this. And then this is when I feel like another real turning point in my life where I used to come to the gym and some people there were like, there was a few of the lads, maybe someone from Scotland, whatever, but majority of people were Asian. I used to maybe chill with a few of the Arab lads, Iranians, whatever, because they're like, they're from maybe rougher areas. I could relate to them a bit more. They're like the boys, you know what I mean? They're not scouts, but the closest to a scout, so you're getting out there. But then it was like, I'm on the mats now and like people are coming up to me like, fucking, I don't know, like, they work for the president or they, this woman's a millionaire or this guy owns loads of businesses and they're coming up to me like, oh yeah, I've been watching all your fights. You're doing well, keep it up. And like, these guys are starting to sponsor me. Like one guy's paying me apartments, the next guy's paying all me food. This guy's paying all me travel everywhere I go. This guy's buying all me gears. And then like, the lad I used to see myself as, this fucking scally from Liverpool, who's fucking never gonna do nothing with his life started to realize like these people don't see me like that mm -hmm. now i'm speaking to them every day and i'm asking them questions and they think england they think harry potter the queen cup of tea and that's how they're looking at me and i'm like wow these are soundies <laughs> so i'm just getting on with them all it was like a family vibe and that now i'm proper loving it there it was mad lad and then is there any point at this point you know things are going so well for you and it's a boss picture you've just painted it's the kind of the anxiety of being on the run and looking over your shoulders, that kind of gone now, has it? Put it all to the back of my mind. Mm. And I just thought, while I'm here, I found something I'm really passionate about. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to mm. do it till the wheels fall off. Mm. When you see your coaching, I can see just the way you're talking that you admire them. Did you, you obviously you didn't tell him that you were. No, at a certain point, Did, like, he's on a level with me. He's from the favelas. He's one of the lads. I just told him, like, lads, because mm. he's telling me to go to the worlds and that. He's like, lad, you'll smash people. You go to Wales, you're winning that, he's saying. And then I've had to just, like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, one day. Yeah, I might do. Oh, I'll think about it. And then one day I just had to be like, lad, I can't ever go to America, me, you know, lad. I can't go and compete in England, me, you know. Why? Ch -ch -ch -ch. I knew something was up. Mm. How and did I, he take that, like, did he? He was saddened, obviously, because his favourite fucking students or one of his best students, because he, he did have other good students, but some of them were doing MMA or some of them were, like, travelling and coming back. I was just there every day. And if Bruno said run at the wall head first, I was running at the wall head first. Mm. If he said this will make you jiu-jitsu better, I was doing it. Like sometimes he'd just go, do push-ups. 
and I wouldn't even be like, why, what have I done? Mm. And then he'd stop the class and say, see, that's what you need to be doing. Now fucking, if I tell you to overhook, overhook. Like, he's not asked, you know what mm. I mean? He's a really good coach, but no bullshit. Yeah. And that's what I love, lad. Yeah. Do you reckon that's what you needed? Someone Defo. to say to you, like, not someone only. not to be afraid, not afraid of you, but not be intimidated by you as the character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't think anyone was intimidated by me because they didn't know me. No, but I mean, like, yeah. from where you come from. Yeah. For then someone to look at you and, like, you know. As a normal guy. Yeah, to laugh and yeah. you submissive you and that stuff. But, I, mean, I don't know, maybe subconsciously someone to, like, you know, I'd say not respect you for being who you are at home. Do you know it, what I mean? It's, it's mad because he wasn't just my coach. He, he, he taught me other shit, like, off the mats even. He'd bring me to his house and let me eat with his family and that. Mm. And we'd go out and do things. And, like, I'd, I'd be out and I'd spit on the floor. I'd be like, what are you doing? Mm. And I'd be like, what do you mean? You're not my dad. Mm. 20 push ups. Nah, you're not coming to the gym then. Don't come to the gym tomorrow. Yeah, coach. Wow. And you're doing them, lad. And then before you know it, lad, you start to pick up on the good habits and stop being a fucking a scumbag, lad. Yeah. Mm. He taught me loads on and off the mat. Yeah, yeah he's, a proper, he's a proper real guy, lad. But that's what martial arts teaches at the core, isn't it? Mm. That's why, like, you know, everyone's everyone walks into that beginner's class, whether you're 80 kilos, 90 kilos you know, 100 kilos or 40, everyone's the same, aren't they? Yeah. And, you know, everyone's just, yeah. the, the person prepared to put the most work in is the one mm. who's going to progress regardless of yeah. what your weight is. And I think that's that's what it is at its core. It just takes you down to nothing, doesn't it? And you've yeah. got to sort of build yourself back up to, to survive, really. What um, When did MMA come then? Um, I went to the World Championships in Dubai. Um, what made you change then to go travelling? Because you, obviously you were reluctant at first, well, travelling too far or not, was... Was Dubai okay to go to, was it? Yeah, Dubai. At that point, there was no extradition from Dubai and that. Yeah, I just weren't willing to go Europe, to be honest, or mm. America. Too close. Yeah, yeah, I just thought, yeah. fuck that. Mm. Um, I weren't against travelling, to be honest. It was just... I was just in the gym. I was just happy to be training with them. Yeah. Like, I didn't care about competing. If he would have said... If he wouldn't have pushed me to compete, I might not have competed. Mm. I might have just been in that gym every day with him and just been happy with that. Mm. Like, I was getting to roll with him every day. Like, he'd have fights coming up, he'd have camps coming up, and he'd ask me to roll with him. He'd ask me to be in his corner and corner him, lad. And I'm a fucking white belt or a blue belt, and I'm like, you're going to fight fucking killers. Like, yeah. he'd, he'd done a tournament, an eight-man tournament, open-weight tournament. He was the lightest guy in the tournament. No one, on, no one in that whole tournament was under, like, 85 kilos. And he asked me to go there with him and corner him in Singapore. I don't know if you know who Craig Jones is. Mm. Craig Jones was one of the, the the participants, and he made it all the way to the final against Craig Jones, and he beat a guy who was like 100 kilos in the tournament, black belt. And lad, it's mad, because I know his game the same way he knows my game. My game is just a shit version of his game. <laughs> so everything he would do is what I would do. Yeah. So when he's in certain positions, I'm like, lad, Fucking make the overhook tighter. Don't give him that underhook. Yeah, yeah. Okay, feet on the hip. So you know now, keep your hip away from his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, sometimes I don't even need to tell him. Sometimes yeah. I go, and he does it. And I'm like, boom, we're in sync here. <laughs> yeah. And lad, he made it all the way to the final. Fought that Craig Jones. Craig Jones beat him. Like, but Craig Jones, one of the best in the world. Like, mm. And he's huge. Probably on the juice as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. So, yeah, now now it's my turn. I've gone to the World Championships in um, Abu Dhabi. Um, fucking, I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself for this one. Like, I What used, year is this, sorry? Oh, fuck me. 2016, 2015 or something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I showed up at this tournament and, lad, we're going to, like, open mats with other Brazilians and lad it's mad Dubai is like a proper uh, Abu Dhabi is like yeah, a proper yeah. hub for Jiu Jitsu lad he took me to this gaff to go and train and there was like a hundred black belts on the mat no one was any other belt they were all black belts and I'm the only blue belt on the mat like what? shit <laughs> they're all teaching in Portuguese speaking Portuguese and I'm just there like you're alright kid how are you mate <laughs> Sam nice to meet you and they're just like who's this blue belt but when it's time to roll after the class, they're going, lad, is he competing in the Worlds? And lad, they're coming up to me and they're going, he's going to win. He's going to be a world champion. He's going to, oh my lad, he's good, he's going to win. So lad, in my head, there was this huge pressure, but there was also this, I've already won. Yeah. And it, should, it, I, it let it get to me a little bit. I got to the tournament in the first round, I fought a guy from UAE. And um, he was shit. He was absolutely dog shit. And I only beat him on two points. 
And I was thinking, like, what? What's going on? I feel weird. I don't feel good. Maybe it was the weight cut as well. Like, I shouldn't have probably cut weight. I never cut weight for jiu-jitsu because it's the world yeah, and everyone else so. does it. I thought I'd do it. Probably shouldn't have. And then um, I thought that in my second fight, I fought a guy from Angola and he put me to sleep with a, a, a loop choke. I was playing half guard in my position. Everything was good. And I was like, I know what's coming here. He's going to go for it. It was a baseball bat choke. He's going to go for the baseball bat choke. I've seen it a million times. When he does, I'll fucking counter it with it. And then I just woke up. <laughs> Ref shaking my legs like that. And I just looked at him and went, I haven't pissed myself, have I? <laughs> and he went, nah, you're all right, fella, get up. I was like, sound, got up, whatever. Um, after then, it was like, I still wanted to compete. I did. But it's like, I'm a bit of a, I'm my own biggest critic. I knew like I need to work on some shit. I need to work harder, I need to train harder, I need to go more. And then like my coach is like, lad, fucking sat me down one day and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm fucking competing and I'm doing all right. And he's like, I know, but you can't do this forever, you know. I'm like, why can't I? I've got sponsors and that. And he's like, yeah, what about when you've got a family and four kids, lad? You're going to fucking live off sponsors. You're going and competing in jiu-jitsu. How much money have you made, mate? Mm. Um, not really, lad, to be honest. No money in jiu-jitsu. No. He's like, lad, there's this tournament coming up. It's MMA. And I'm like, but I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. He's like, exactly. We'll be like, oh, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you get Go in there and show them all your jiu-jitsu and that. It'll make you big and that. I'm like, don't know, you know. He's like, look, anyone who wins this tournament, you automatically get a contract to one championship.